pulls it all together. Now, in order to contain the data, you are required to have an ASC which is running, uh, and that can be uh, either, uh, actually, let me, let me say it differently. You need a Sybase database to, uh, server to be running. Uh, that can be a Sybase ASC uh, with an RSSD database or ERSSD on uh, SQL Anywhere. Stable queues are a component that you'll hear about, and what these do are store the list of what's going from source to target. The idea here is that once we identify what the change is, we want to make sure the change goes to the set of target servers that we want it to go to. We don't necessarily have a one-to-one -one correspondence. It might be one to 20, one to 50, one to, or more realistically, one to three or four. Uh, maybe you're going to warm standby, and you're going to reporting, and you're going to uh, fill in the blank. Uh, at this point, the stable queue comes into play. It can be raw device. Uh, it can be a file system, uh, file on the file system. The idea here is we have a place to put the transactions while they're in transit. We have a route, which is a one-way message stream that goes from the rep server, uh, from a source rep server to a destination. Note this does not depend on the number of databases being managed. Uh, but you can set up a, a single route uh, that goes from one to multiple targets. There is a new tool called RMS, Replication Monitoring Service, used to be RSM. And the idea here is that uh, now we have an ability to monitor and manage some relatively complex environments. It sits in between Rep Manager and the servers, and what it allows you to do is monitor, run scripts, identify when the stable queues are starting to get big, Rep Server slows down, one of the pieces goes missing, and uh, run scripts when something uh, goes wrong uh, and perhaps performs a notification. Other important components of the rep server, well, we've got the database servers, that's where we are uh, connecting to, uh, the database connections, which will go from the servers to wherever we're going, uh, replication agents, which will uh, exist for each source database. The replication agents are the things which identify the changes that are being made and pass them on to the replication server. We make connections, definitions, uh, these replication definitions identify what it is we're going to replicate. We can create subscriptions to the replicant data, and client applications hopefully are relatively unaffected by everything that's going on. In this very simple replication setup, and replication setups can become extremely complex, uh, we have a customer uh, application which is changing data. Now, the data is represented by that disk on the bottom. It might be AFC, Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, whatever it is that's running that uh, we're able to monitor. Uh, we have a replication agent, which often sits on the same box. And what it does is it pays attention to what changes are being made. Uh, generally, it does that by looking in the logs. Uh, and honestly, I'm an ASC uh, geek, and I'm a SQL Server geek. Uh, I don't know what this does on the Oracle and DB2 side, but it's got to do some sort of equivalent of uh, watching the log so it identifies what transactions are occurring. Once it identifies the transactions that A are occurring and B are relevant, uh, we may, for example, only be replicating from certain tables. Uh, it passes this information off to the replication server. The replication server will pass this across the network, if necessary, to other replication servers, if necessary, and across those routes, pass things out to different ASC servers, uh, an IQ server, whatever is appropriate uh, as far as your target environments go. So, uh, installing a rep server, uh, I'm going to go through these relatively quickly. This is not going to be a lesson on installation, but we're going to list some of the basic steps. We're going to have to, bring the uh, we're going to have to download not only the server, but an appropriate license. If you haven't done that uh, in the past three or four years, uh, it's uh, a little different than it used to be. Uh, it used to be you click on something and download. Now you have to identify the licensed products, log into the right place, and then download the right license. Uh, it's a matter of following directions, and we're all good at that, or we wouldn't be DBAs. Set the directory up for the rep software, untar it, run the setup, and uh, tell it where things are going to go. Uh, generally, uh, if you look at the installation manual, it always gives you a list of those things that you need to decide before you do the install. I strongly remember identifying what you need to do before you get into the install. Make sure you add an entry in the interfaces file for the rep server. This is so that your uh, Sybase server can find it. Run RS init from the install directory. 
fill in the blanks and tell it where things are going to go, what you're going to name the servers, uh, the, which ID server you're going to use, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, and again, uh, choose things like names before you start doing the install and record all this information someplace uh, relevant and appropriate. Take a look at the on-console logs. It'll tell you how the installation is going. As an alternative, we can check the physical log. And the location of that log is going to depend on uh, what version you're running. This would be a log location for Rep Server version 15.2. Come troubleshooting points. Some common mistakes uh, can lead to failed execution. Uh, if you don't have an ID server, don't mention the ID server, point to the wrong ID server, you're going to get out of luck. Uh, stable queue devices and paths need to have correct permissions. Uh, wrong RSSD server names, that's your target for the, uh, the ASC, which is going to maintain the database of rep definitions. We have multiple types of replication. Uh, first is warm standby. Once again, this is the uh, more common uh, type of replication. The idea here is that if our primary fails, then we are going to stop performing our work on the primary, move over to the secondary. Uh, why is this called a warm standby as opposed to a hot standby? Well, uh, primarily this is because we're going to have to change our connection and move over to the new box and make it the primary. And because there is a step that has to be performed, it's more of a warm standby. Uh, publish subscribe model. Uh, this is full-blown uh, multi-directional replication. You can build this in a lot of different ways. MSA, multi-site availability. Uh, this is for, I guess it's a subset of the publish subscribe. We're publishing it to one and pushing it off to another. Heterogeneous replication may go from ASE to IQ to Oracle to DB2 to uh, whatever your target environment happens to be. Basic setup for warm standby. Uh, when you're setting up a warm standby, uh, I, I see a lot of folks being penny wise and pound foolish. Many folks will use as a warm standby their old primary box. If you don't have identical boxes, you're really asking for trouble because if the event happens which causes the failover, you're not going to be guaranteed uh, the same performance at the target server. So make sure the boxes are, uh, are consistent in terms of uh, setup configuration. Make sure the configuration is the same. Uh, and make sure you're set to uh, fail over. And then test this once in a while. Don't test this, of course, at 2.30 in the afternoon when your users are going crazy, but get there eventually. DML operations happening in the primary data server are replicated to the target. Uh, and this is, can be done in one of a couple ways. Uh, we can do this on a per tra transaction basis, or we can do this on a DML basis. The DML basis is relatively new. This is easily set up with the help of RS init. Uh, you can also set this up at the command line. And honestly, it's probably not a bad idea to set them up at the command line once in a while, just to understand what's going on behind the scenes and to, and to understand the steps that RS init is performing for you uh, back there. So uh, create a maintenance user on the primary and secondary. Grant rep role, replication role to both of the users. Uh, install the replication server stored procs uh, and tables on the primary. And uh, create the rep agent log into the replication server. And uh, you should be able to get pretty much get there. Uh, create your logical connection. Create the connection from the rep to the primary. Uh, configure the rep agent. Uh, don't forget the rep agent, and then mark the database itself for replication. Create a connection from the rep to the uh, secondary and materialize. That's a critical component. The materialization says, hey, let's push the initial uh, amount of data from the source to the target, bring the connection up, and, uh, and that pretty much hits the end of it. The RS init can be used to set up a warm standby. Uh, we do recommend that you uh, at least look at the command line procedure to see what's going on there. I, I think one of the things that uh, you know, Embarcadero DB Artisan did way back one, uh, when uh, to you know, ruin a, a uh, or at least make difficult uh, entry into the DBA community was to hide all the things that were going on behind the scenes by trying to automate it. Well, that works out great until something goes wrong uh, and you don't know what the components are. So I do like seeing what goes uh, on behind the scenes. 